In this presentation, we will take a look at an example problem recording transactions for a general fund as we do so focusing in on deferred inflows and the allocation or categorization of receivables between current receivables and delinquent receivables. Information is going to generally be on the left side. We're going to post those with a journal entry or record a journal entry, then post them to a worksheet. The worksheet giving us a trial balance and a chart of accounts, which will be in order, help us to ground this information as we work through these accounts. The green accounts will be asset type accounts, orange accounts, liability, and deferred inflow accounts. We have the fund balance account, which would be equivalent to the equity section, the net asset section, the fund balance type section, the section that we would close out temporary revenue accounts to in a for-profit organization. The dark blue is what would be the income statement accounts, revenue and expenses in a for-profit organization. It being a little bit more confusing with the governmental fund accounting with the, with the modified accrual basis in the general fund because of course we have the revenue and then expenditures and then we also have to deal with possibly posting budgetary accounts estimated revenues appropriations and then we have this other account called encumbrances which will also be muddying the waters down there down below we're going to have the beginning balance debits are going to be positive credits negative green item green zero means that we are in balance or the debits minus the credits equal zero First item, we're going to say property tax levied, and it's going to be the 4,708,000. We're going to estimate that 3% is uncollectible. Now, obviously, we're going to say that this is going to be revenue to the government. So this is going to be revenue. It would be then following what we would might expect on an accrual basis, and that is that we're going to increase the taxes receivable. This would be similar for a for-profit organization basically sending out an invoice. So we send out an invoice. People owe us money. We're going to increase the receivable. Only unusual thing here is that the receivables have three different receivables here. So we got three receivables. We, of course, are going to be using the current receivable because we just build these people. It's going to be current. Then we'll move it to delinquent at some point in time when they become delinquent. Now, we're also going to record the allowance at this point in time. So we've seen the allowance account in for-profit accounting we're going to record the allowance at the point in time that we have the assessment of the penalties because this uh, we're, that's a little bit different, but it's pretty much accrual accounting. So we're going to say 4,708,000 4, times 0.03, and that's going to give us the amount that we think is uncollectible. We're going to credit that. That's going to go into that contra asset account for the allowance for uncollectible accounts. And then the difference between the two is going to be revenue. So this is what we build for, in essence. Those are the property taxes that we levied and assessed. This is the amount that we think is uncollectible. The difference then go into revenue. Note that as we re record this to revenue, we're kind of doing this on an accrual basis. This is pretty much an accrual basis type of transaction, increasing the revenue account. However, the general fund is on a modified accrual basis. So later on, we're going to have to deal with this problem. We're going to have to deal with this transaction. The fact that we're recording the revenue, even though we haven't earned it, the modified accrual is going to be somewhere between accrual and cash basis. We're going to want to reverse that and take some of the money out or the revenue out that we didn't yet earn. However, we don't want to get rid of the receivables, which are also accrual balance sheet accounts. And that's going to be kind of the modified accrual that we're going to have to deal with. So beware, we're going to come back to this revenue account and actually decrease it in the future. And that's when this deferred inflow of resources will come into play. So here's going to be the recording of it. We're debiting the current receivable as we would think, increasing it from zero up to 4708 We're crediting the allowance, which is going to be a contra asset account as we would expect for a for-profit organization. And then the other side is going to go to revenue as we would expect down here in the income statement accounts, increasing those temporary type of accounts. Then we're going to say that we collected 4372000 now, this is going to be fairly straightforward on an accrual basis versus the modified accrual as well. We're going to say, obviously, that we got cash. So cash is cash. Anytime we see cash, we're excited because, you know, it's pretty easy to know what cash does. They can't mess that up with any modified accrual. Typically, cash goes up or down. And then the other side is going to be taxes receivable, as we would expect. We already recorded the revenue. Therefore, the taxes receivable are now going to be going down. So this is all balance sheet accounts. This is just straight accrual accounting. Cash is uh, going up and the receivable going down. Of course, we got paid on the current receivables is what we're indicating here. Current receivables then being the items being decreased. Then we're going to say that we collected this amount from the delinquent receivables and this amount from the interest and penalties. 
well okay so first thing we could know is cash is going up again so that's pretty straightforward cash is going up for the sum of those two the 55 8 and the 5 so that's going to be the 60,800 and then the other two is going to do what we would expect decreasing the receivable however it's not in the current receivable we're breaking out the receivable so that's going to be the kind of different thing here we have a delinquent receivable those are going to be the receivables that are our past due at some point we're going to say these are delinquent at the end of a time period and we're systematically going to be removing the, the receivables out of the current putting them into the delinquent receivables and then collecting based on those delinquent receivables and as we do so we may be assessing of course interest and penalties as we uh, have the delinquent receivables that's one of the things that we're that's going to help us there and then we'll have the interest and penalties which we're going to calculate of course on the delinquent receivables not typically on the current receivables because they are current we're going to put them into their own category as well and calculate the receivables based on the interest and penalties that are collectible if we were to post this then cash is going up that's what we would expect we got cash from some of the delinquents so here's the delinquent receivables and that's going down as we would expect a normal receivable to go down and then we have the interest and that's just going to be another receivable account category and it is going down so nothing unusual there really from an accrual type basis we're paying off the receivable except now we have three classes of receivables then we have the unusual item happening now so this is going to be the new thing the modified accrual type basis note that at the at the first transaction that we had we recorded the receivables and the revenue on more of, of an accrual basis and at the end of the time period we said that we're going to have to reverse that and be more on a cash basis reversing the revenue but not reversing it to the receivable trying to keep the receivable in the accrual account and still keep revenue more on a cash basis that's what we're going to do at the end of the time period well we did that at the end of last time period as well meaning we over recorded the revenue then we reversed the revenue to get back to a cash basis not taking it back to receivable not wanting to decrease the receivable wanting to track the receivables but also be on more of a cash basis and therefore where did we have to put the difference we had to put it to vouchers payable I'm not vouching we had to put it to a payable deferred inflows of resources so normally when we do this kind of funny thing and we, we did something kind of non accrual non a cash type of thing you would think they would make an equity account that's typically the trend so we've seen some equity accounts that have been created as we do some governmental accounting this time we put it into a liability account which kind of makes sense because of course it acts like uh, a liability type account and this is going to be a difference between somewhere between cash and accrual basis and again the, the point of this is I would think of it this way we want to keep the accrual account of receivables to track the receivable and we want to take the the income statement account on more of a cash basis therefore we had to make up this uh, deferred inflow of resources account so you'll see that we we put in this example exactly the 60,800 uh, that we're collecting now so now we're collecting on funds that were past due in the prior time period and we put them into this deferred inflows of resources and we we made the normal collection as we normally would because we reversed uh we got we recorded the cash and we recorded the decrease in the receivable but now we have to do this added thing which is to take it out of the deferred inflow of resources and record the related revenue more on a cash basis so now we're gonna we're gonna take this out of a liability or in essence a liability kind of count or similar to a liability account and we're going to record it as revenue in the current time period so we're going to say the deferred inflow of resources is going to go down and the other side is going to go to revenue if we record that then deferred inflow of resources was at the 68.8 it's going to go down to zero and again why was it there we'll see that transaction increase in deferred inflow of resources at the end of the time period when we reverse the the, the non cash portion of the revenue that we recruit that we recorded in the prior transaction so we'll see the increase this is from last time period that was increased we now receive the revenue we're going to take it down now and then we're going to record the revenue at this point in time on more of a cash basis so we're recording on the cash basis yet still keeping the receivables on the books and recording that accrual type of account as we normally would next item we're going to say that we imposed interest and penalties so we have interest and penalties that we've calculated and imposed that's of course another kind of revenue type account that we would think that we have however if we know we're not going to collect this revenue into the next time period we may not be recording the revenue now 
but maybe we're putting it into the deferred inflow of resources. So in other words, if we impose interest and penalties, that would be similar to us sending out, say, an invoice in a for-profit organization, we would increase the receivable. In this case, we're going to put it into the specific receivable of interest and penalties receivable rather than, an, you know, just a general receivable. Then we're going to say the amount that is uncollectible is the uh, difference between the 15.6 and the 13.50 because we're saying we're going to collect this amount. This is what we basically build on for the interest and penalties. The difference between the two is going to be allowance for uncollectible. That's going to be, seem normal. You would think the other side then would go to revenue under accrual accounting. But it doesn't because at this point in time, what we're going to say is, is that we don't expect to collect this revenue in the current time period. We expect to collect it in the, in the next period. So what we're kind of, what we're trying to do again is is be in the middle between an accrual and a cash basis. We want to keep the receivable on an accrual basis. It's an accrual account. We want to keep it there, but we don't want to record the revenue on an accrual basis. We want to try to keep the revenue reported more on a cash basis. And therefore, since we're not going to collect the cash in this time period, we're taking this account directly to the deferred inflow of resources which is kind of like a liability account they could group it separately in the accounting equation but in essence it's going to act like a liability assets minus liabilities equals the fund balance and, and this will be included in that section so we're going to increase that liability and then next time period when we collect on these items we'll def we'll reverse the deferred revenue we'll do the normal transaction as we saw in the prior transaction we'll take it out of the receivable we'll record the cash and then we'll have to do this reversal taking it out of the deferred inflows and uh, recording the revenue in the time period in which the cash was received so if we were to record this then we're going to say that the interest is is going up as we would expect so it's from here it's going up that's a receivable account the allowance then is also going up that's going to be the uncollectible portion as we would expect and then the deferred inflow of resources is this funny liability type account which isn't what we would normally expect on an accrual basis. We would expect it to be down here in revenue. That's the odd thing. That's the modified accrual basis on the general fund accounting. The next thing we're going to do is reclassify the current receivables to the delinquent receivables. So we're going to say that we're at the end of the time period and we want to take the, take the current receivables and say they're no longer current and we got to move them from current to delinquent. So we can think of this as one journal entry, like closing out, we would need to make this zero, we would need to make this zero, and we want to put that difference into the uh, the receivable, the delinquent accounts. Or we could think of them as two journal entries, which I'll do here. Also note, if you post the transactions and you actually have the GL, then of course, all we have to do is look at the trial balance and say, what's in it? I need to make that go to zero and then post the other side. If you're working a book problem that just has floating journal entries, then you're going to have to, of course, create a T account in order to get to this number to build it out. So that's why it's it's nice to basically see a trial balance. Uh, if you're working a long problem, then you're going to have to pick some of these accounts that are relevant, which, of course, will be the receivable accounts in this type of a problem and create a T account in a similar fashion as we've done here. So just uh, be aware of that. You want to go back and just track the activity through the receivable and the allowance accounts. We here in practice and, of course, as we track on a trial balance can just say, all right, this is the amount in the the current receivable i need to make it go down to zero so i'm going to credit it by whatever's in it and the debit's going to go to the delinquent side so that's going to be pretty straightforward and this is what's in the allowance i need to make it go to zero it has a credit i'm going to do the opposite thing to it debit it and then the other side's going to go into the delinquent account so if we were to post that then we're just saying okay the the current receivable is going down to zero the other side's going to the delinquent account increasing the delinquent receivable the allowance is going down to zero and the other side is going to go to the delinquent account making it go up in the credit direction just in essence moving these down to zero putting the difference into the delinquent receivables because they're delinquent the next thing we want to do is note the difference between those two items right we've got the the three three six zero 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 minus the 141240, that 194, uh, 760 is included. M remember, we recorded the entire receivable as revenue on an accrual basis. So it was re that difference is, was recorded as revenue. And on a cash basis, we're not going to get that difference. We're not going to get it. 
And now we're going to make an adjustment related to that to, to adjust our books from an accrual basis to more of a cash basis on the income statement while not reversing or adjusting the receivable balances. So again, we're going to have to do that funny type of transaction we saw prior to this. We're going to debit the revenue account or similar funny transaction. We're going to debit revenue and we're going to credit the deferred inflow of resources. So here's the deferred inflow of resources and here's the revenue. So why are we doing this again? Remember, revenue we recorded during this time period on an accrual basis, increasing the receivable and, and the allowance and recording the revenue that we would record on an accrual basis before we got the cash. Now we're going to go back in at the end of the time period and say, okay, now we know how much cash we got. We know how much cash we didn't get of, you know, this revenue amount, 194,760 was not received in cash. Therefore, we're going to reduce the revenue by the amount that was not received in cash, taking this number down to what we would think on a cash basis. The other side you would think would go to accounts receivable under a cash basis method because accounts receivable is not an accrual type of account but we want to keep accounts receivable on the books therefore where do we put the other side to this account called deferred inflow of resources so it acts like a liability goes up uh, kind of like a liability on a credit basis so we just basically put it into the liability section so now we're on uh, a cash basis in essence on the income statement, we have our accrual account of the receivable still on the books. We can still track and bill people. And yet we have this deferred inflow of resources representing uh, the amount of revenue that, had, you know, that we've billed for that we haven't collected the kind of accrued revenue that's not going to be on the income statement. So that's going to be the kind of unusual item. As we saw in, in the prior part of the problem, when we collect on this next time period, we're going to right, we're going to debit cash. We're going to credit the receivable like we normally would, but we also have to then reverse this, taking it out of the deferred and recording the related revenue in the time period it was collected. That being more of a cash basis method on the income statement, accrual method more of on the balance sheet.